Now you have everything you need to create videos for your online course fast. It doesn't have to be overwhelming with a lot of tech or equipment or a pro video editor in your back pocket. What you need is a desire to reach your audience and a little flame under your bum because guess what? Your competition recorded their videos yesterday and their course is already out in the world. Ouch, 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 ouch. I know. Now this video is going to be a little bit longer because it is the ultimate video guide. It is all the thing. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that notification bell and I'll meet you right back here in three, two, one. Welcome back. Okay, I love online courses as a way to package your expertise, everything that's up in your noggin and serve a global audience. But what happens is you overthink how to get those darn course videos done. No more. I'm breaking this video up into three easy segments. Like I said, it's a little bit longer, but we're gonna do pre-production, production, and post-production. I can't help it. It's just how my pro video mind works. Okay, let's dive into pre-production. Whip out your notebook because you are going to need to write some of this down. The first thing you want to do is pick your format, pick the style of course video that you want to create. You have talking head. This is a talking head, just me on camera. You have slides only where it's slides with VO or voiceover narration, whatever you want to call it. And you have a hybrid, which is you on camera mixed with slides, which is what I highly recommend. Um, for better engagement with your students, because if your slides only, then they're going to tune out. It's really hard to keep people interested if it's just slides up there and you have to do some crazy great voiceover to keep them interested. I like the hybrid where I come in in the beginning and I welcome them, then I cut to slides and maybe I'll cut back and then I cut the slides again. And then I definitely want to see them at the end and I want to tell them they've done a great job and what to go do next. It's being kind to your learning audience. And my students love, love, love my courses. And I'm gonna show you the process of how I do this. Now, the first thing I want you to do is have your script and your slides ready. If you're using slides, they should be finished. Your scripts should all be finished because the word of the day is batching. What is batching? Well, batching is when you do something as a chunk, you do it together. So when I script my course content, I do it all at one time. It has a better flow. I start with a welcome video and I know that I'm going to welcome people on camera and I will write welcome video on camera and script it module one, module two, module three. And I know when I'm cutting to slides so that when I'm on camera, I can say, okay, let's cut to the slides. It just makes it feel like one fluid piece of content. The other thing I want you batching again are your slides and your videos. So you have your slides done. And when you're starting to record all of your course content, you're going to batch that as well. I don't change my shirts. I don't change my hair. I don't change my earrings. I don't care. And your audience really doesn't care. So again, you're going to take a day, script out what you're going to say on your videos, pick another day, chunk out a bunch of time so you can record all of your videos chunk out one more day if you're going to use slides and record all of your slides now here's a little pre-production note for when you are scripting more content is not better a question i get all the time about video in general is how long should my videos be and i have a very 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 un pc answer and that is and it definitely goes for courses it's like a mini skirt it should be short enough to keep me interested and long enough to cover the bare essentials fire hosing your audience, giving them far too much, going way too in depth when they're not ready for it is not kind to your audience. More content does not mean more value. I'm going to say that again. More content does not mean more value. So there's this, there's this super smart guy named Eric something or other, I always forget his name, but he, he did a study on chunking and chunking is how we learn best. And it is small, digestible bites. People are more likely to watch 10 five minute videos than a 50 minute video. They'll feel overwhelmed and like they don't have time for it, but they'll binge watch the little five minute videos. So when you're thinking through your content, think short digestible bites. And I also want to mention substance over style. Again, don't get caught up if you're making slides and they're not like the most beautiful slides in the world. I have a beautiful book called The Presentation Zen. And I love this book because it just teaches you how to make 
simple, impactful slides. You don't want to put a ton of information on there. Again, fire hosing your audience, just pick simple. Also, when we're talking about substance over style, I like to design my courses as 20% information, 80% implementation. Why? Because if people are implementing, they're learning, and they're actually taking action rather than just watching videos and absorbing the information. We want them taking action on your information. So how can you make whatever you're teaching actionable and then make that 80% of your course? Now, the last thing I want to mention is you need to practice. Now I'm going to go into Zoom and I'm going to show you how to record the face to camera, exactly how I do it, but you have to practice. You can't just do all of this pre-production and then expect to show up on your record day and just do it perfectly. Nope, not going to happen. If you have scripts, practice them out loud. If you're stumbling over a sentence, I always tell my students to change the sentence around a little bit. If you keep stumbling, it needs to come out because you will always stumble on it and your brain will be like, oh my gosh, that sentence is coming up. Oh my gosh, that sentence is coming up. Don't worry about any of that. You're going to record in batches. So just practice through everything that you have. So it feels a little bit more fluid, a little bit more comfortable. Okay. Let's jump into the actual production. The first thing we want to talk about is your lighting because lighting is so important because you are the star of this. So when you are on camera, I want you to be well lit. Now I recorded a video on lighting and it's in the description there. You can scroll down, watch me on 2X. It's okay, I'll sound like a chipmunk, but you'll get the basic ideas of how to light well. Zoom also has something to help you out called adjust for low light. So if you're really struggling, you can adjust the low light and I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. But the basics are face your light. Right? I don't want to see you plopping yourself in front of a window, meaning we see the window behind you because you're going to be backlit and you'll be in darkness. And then people are just looking at a blown out white box behind you. Face it, look out the window. If you have a ring light, use your ring light. If you have flat panel lighting, use that. But I just want to make sure that you're well lit. Don't overthink it. You can always make it better next time. Now your framing. Framing is really important because what I see a lot of people do is place themselves kind of like down here. I don't know why you do that because that makes you feel small to your audience. When we talk about framing, I want you to fill it up, buttercup, right? I like to say you want about an internet inch above your head, um, tickling the top of your of the screen there. And I like to stay in the middle because nowadays, if I want to crop it in to use for IG reels or something like that, I can. If you think you are going to use digital zoom editing, then I leave a little bit more room. And I'll talk about this when I'm recording so that I can have two different focal lengths. So I'll record here in editing. My editor just pulls it a little closer. Your sound is really important, but I use the internal mic in my computer because my computer is fairly new. If you need an additional mic, I have some suggestions in a resource guide. You can use a Blue Yeti. If you're moving around a little bit, there's a great Rhodes lavalier mic. Again, test this out, practice, and make sure that you can hear yourself well. People will stay if the picture is not so great and the audio is awesome not so the other way around. If the audio is hard to hear or crackly, or there's background noises like your dog barking or a fan on, or someone had an air conditioner going, something going on in the back, like your kids are screaming, then that's gonna be a distraction. You wanna make sure that you are in a quiet place trying to get the best audio. Now I'm gonna hop into Zoom and show you exactly how I use Zoom to record all of my course content. So I just come into one of my Zoom meetings Okay, then I'm going to start my video and I'm going to see, you can see my, you can see my ceiling and my thing, my wall there. We're just going to bring it back a little bit and here and there we are a little bit better. You know, again, framing wise, I talked about it. I want your head tickling the top unless you're planning on using um, a digital zoom, in which case you want to be standing back a little bit farther. So in editing, if you want to bring it forward or back. Uh, you can. But again, I'll start here. Important part is to keep your contact with your camera. Now, how I record is, again, I want to hit record and then record to my computer. I do not want to record to the iCloud for a couple of different reasons. I uh, have had students and clients lose things on the cloud and with video, 
oh, it's so frustrating, right? So you don't want to do that funny hair in the way. Um, so you don't want to, I, I don't like to do that. Plus I wanted to record 720. And sometimes when it's going to the cloud, it records smaller and your name is up, you know, where it has like Tracy Phillips, she, her. I don't want that as part of it because I don't want to have to bring it in and edit that out. So I want it as clean as possible. And I get that if I'm recording to my desktop. So a couple settings before we get in there and right next to, so you stop video, don't stop your video. The little up carrot next to your stop video, bling, right there. I like to go to my video settings. Okay, there's a couple things. I want your HD. I want that checked. And then you can see you have touch up my appearance and adjust for low light. Your touch up your appearance, you can go back and forth and that just gives you a little more smoothness. Now, I don't bring it up all the way. Um, maybe in another year or two, I will. I do it at about a little over midway. I call it my Barbara Streisand number 35, right? And so uh, it's just a little bit of a blur to blur out a little bit of the wrinkles to make you a little softer. It's nice. It helps your lighting. And so that and if you do have low light or you have lighting issues, you can come here and play with that a little bit, right? So if you're struggling with your lighting, generally, I would never have you do this within a video program or in your camera, but it Zoom actually does a great job with that. So those are the two settings. I just want to make you make sure, well, three settings that you have um, there and that should do it. And then you're ready to go, right? And then you just record. So I'll record a little bit here, record on this computer. Recording in progress. Recording in progress. So now I will deliver, right? Blah, 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 blah. I have an outline. I can see it. Sometimes I cover my face, so I'm not looking at me, but I am connecting with my little green dot because that is really important. You don't want to be looking around and being like all shifty shady, right? So when I, I record a chunk, hey, this is Tracy. I'm so glad you made it to module one. Um, here's what we're gonna do today, blah, blah, blah. Okay, let's jump to the slides. So if you have slides, that's all I would do. Um, and then I'd hit pause. Recording stopped. I paused my recording. Then I would hop to the end. So then you have your slide presentation, which you can either do in here and you can actually just share slides through Google Slides and narrate through the whole thing. Narrate, voiceover, VO, all the same, right? And then I'd hop to the end and be like, Recording in progress. Oh my gosh, you did such a great job. I'm so glad that you did blah, blah, blah. Okay, I'm gonna meet you over in module two where we'll do blah, blah, blah. Or make sure you do this before you hop into module two. That's it. That's what I want you to Recording do. Recording stopped. Then I stop or pause. And then when I'm all done, I would end the meeting and then it'll save to my computer. And so that's what I want you to get in the habit of. It's just like pausing, get your chunk, get it right. Start recording. Now, little, little tip here is get the whole thing. So what people do is they start to record as they're like, Hey, this is Tracy Fields, right? And you're recording. No good. You want to hit record, settle. This is my settle, settle. Hey, I'm so glad you're here. Settle, smile, pause. So you do definitely wanna have some pauses in there just so when you're in editing, you're like, oh, why did I look down? The other thing is if you, you're recording in chunks, as I suggest, right? Make sure that when you end one chunk, you're smiling and you start another one, you're smiling the same way so you're able to edit them easily together. Um, what happens sometimes is we'll be like, okay, and then we stop and we're like this, and the next takes like this. Now, it's not a huge deal. If your content's really good, no one's gonna care about that. Uh, but if you wanna make your editing job or your editor's job a little bit easier, is just try and match frame. So I try and start and end each of mine like this because it's the same smile. It's my cheese smile. Easy to edit, edit and cut together. Okay, that's it. That's how I record every single one of my courses. And now I'm gonna jump in and I'm gonna show you how you would record your voice if you were using slides. You could do this two ways. Obviously you can just keep talking and have your slides playing in the background so you can then match up your audio with the slides and just bring the slides in in editing. Or you can actually record using things like ScreenFlow, Screencast-O-Matic, um, PowerPoint, Keynote. All of these have an option where you can run through your slides and record at the same time. Why not do that? And then just edit them together. Now I can only show you in a keynote. I'm not familiar with PowerPoint, but it would be similar to this. And so what we want to do is for here, you go to play. So if you're in Kona, keynote, play, record slideshow. So now it's going to bring me to another, there you go. 
So what it's showing me over here is the next slide. I just, I just care about the current slide. Now what you can't see below here is, let me actually pull this down just a hair. Oh, it won't let me. But anyway, my notes are below this. I should be recording the whole screen, but I'm not. Oh, here we go. So you can see my notes. I'm just going to pull it down there, right? So they only see the slide and it's only going to record the slide. And then I can see my notes. So the way I would do this is I would hit the record button on um, at the bottom. There's here. Why don't we pull it down and show you why well, might as well, right? Let's go down here all the way down at the bottom. There's a little record button right here and you would hit record three, two, one. I'm going to come pull it back up. So I show you my actual slides. There's my script, right? So it's just recording my slides. So hi and welcome to how to make bite-sized video. Today I want to help you learn how to create your videos with intention and attention. In other words, video with a purpose, video that connects and nurtures your audience. Right, then we move on to the next slide, next slide, next slide. So this is recording your slides and your voice at the same time. When you're done, then you go back to the little button on the bottom and you'd hit it. When you're done, you'll come back up and go to file, export to movie, right? And then it's the slideshow recording, movie, 720 is great, next. Right, how to make your spite die desktop, that's fine. And then we export it and it will make a movie. Now, let's find my movie on there. Now, if you wanna take that same slide deck and you wanna record your voice, sometimes you could just read through the notes on Zoom and then you'll know how to match it up. So your voice will match a little bit more in that program. Um, and you just wanna export the slides and then bring them into the editor so that you can place them out. Again, great way to do that is you would take your file and export images is how I like to do it. So we export the images and it just makes a lot of JPEGs, high quality JPEGs. Then you would do next and you can decide, you know, there you go. I'm going to say slide so it doesn't get confused, export, and that's it. It's creating the images, and then I would import those into my editor, into my program, and lay those out on the line with my voice. So here's where it exported. I double click that. You can see that's all of my slides, and I have 65 of them. And if I go like this and I look, yep, there they are. You can run through them. I'm, it's only showing you a tiny bit of them because they're that big, right? I'd go into my folder, make sure that I brought that in there. Here they are, right? And then you want to open your project. There it is, right? And then I would just import them. And again, depending on your project, it's all different. Where are they? I have to come down, look for my folder. Here they are. I would bring my slides in, import selected. There we go. So here are all of my slides, right? Placing the slides down the line, placing them where you want them to be, um, going through, right, and timing them. And again, you don't have to have the video. You can still record in Zoom and just take the audio file and time it to your audio file. So this is the way that you would import the slides um, if it's separate from your audio. Okay, I hope that was helpful. That is exactly how I record all of my course content. And yes, I'm a video pro, so I could do it much harder, much more expensive. Why? Why? The last thing I want to talk to you about is your delivery. And it doesn't have to be perfect. I need you to hear this. Your students are buying something from you. Whoever is consuming your course, they're a human. Please be human. Please don't try and make every single part of your delivery perfect. Listen, I leave in some of my mistakes, especially if they make me giggle. If I mispronounce something, I'll say, oh, easy for me to say, and I leave it in there and then keep going. I don't want to break my flow and make all of my content super choppy. Your audience wants you to teach them something new. They don't expect you to be perfect. And in fact, they will feel more attached to you if you're, if you're telling jokes, if you're using gestures, if you're leaning in, tell people to write things down. I like to do one of these where I'm like, make sure you write this down. My students will email me and say, oh my God, I love this part in the video where you do this. How do you record your course videos? Expecting me to say that I use a lot of a fancy equipment. I don't. 
I use Zoom and my personality. If you make an egregious mistake, yes, you can do it over. But if you're just stumbling and you can recover, recover. What I really want you to hear is you don't have to edit out all of the mistakes. Be human. Holy crap. I'm going to leave this in. You see what happened there? Leaving it in. Welcome to post-production. All post-production means is you're going to take all of the parts, the slides, the video, and you're going to put them together in an editor, or you're going to package them together and send them to your editor. Now, if you're using an editor to do this for you, you need to have notes. You need to have some sort of structure so that they know, okay, when I'm talking about this, it's this slide. When I'm talking about this, it's this slide. They are not mind readers. You need to have a good relationship with your editor. And if you're doing it yourself, you have those you obviously know where things go. Now, I can't teach you the editing because every editing system is different. You're going to have to look up whatever editor you have. Uh, I use Final Cut. My pro editors use Premiere. And I am just happy to tell you that iMovie is awesome and you can make your courses in iMovie. Oh, yes you can. There's another thing I want to talk about that comes up in post-production that can add a little production value to your course content, and that is B-roll. You have your slides, and that's great, but there's also an opportunity to use B-roll. And B-roll simply means additional footage that goes up over and covers your face. Let's show you some here. This is B-roll. Don't use B-roll to use B-roll, but if you can help make a point or show something, then use some B-roll. There are some great sites out there where you can either purchase video or pictures. My favorite is actually Pexels, P-E-X-E-L-S.com, and it's free. Again, when we talk about post-production, it's really hard for me to teach you how to edit the pieces together. I am gonna jump in right now and show you the digital zoom I was talking about. And simply what this is, is like we were talking about, it's cutting two pieces of a talking head together that makes it look like it's a different focal length. Now, caution, you're recording on Zoom, which records in 720, decent enough, but you don't wanna pull it too far forward or it'll start to get fuzzy, right? You can only pull it forward. I do it about 116% and that seems to be just fine. So here's an example of how I edit those together with a digital Zoom. You don't have to use a digital zoom. It is perfectly acceptable these days to just do what is called a jump cut, which is cutting from you to you and just keep moving on. Okay, really quickly, I want to just come in and show you the difference between a jump cut and a digital zoom, which I mentioned earlier. And the digital zoom is simply that is you're digitally zooming in a clip. So when you're recording, you do have to think about this ahead of time and step back a hair from the camera so you have room to move in. So where I'm gonna have you looking is down here on the line and then up here in transform. Okay, so first I'm gonna show you a jump cut. This is a jump cut, multicast means. Now, if you're wondering, hey, Tracy. That was it. It was from one take to another. Let's show you another one. Cost. I'm so glad you asked. So we have the free jump cut. Okay, just from me to me. I didn't change the framing. I didn't change anything. So now if I wanted to do a digital zoom, you can see right up here, I do have enough room above my head to bring it in. Two things I'm going to use are scale and position. And so I'm just going to take this clip, highlight it. Okay. Then I'm going to come up to scale and I generally don't like to go any bigger than maybe 120 is really pushing it uh, when you're using zoom because you don't want it to get fuzzy. But let's say there now my headroom is not quite right. So I'm going to go to my Y axis and just bring it down so that my headroom is a little bit better there. So that was it. That's a digital zoom and I'll show you what that looks like on play. So look here. Cost. I'm so glad you asked. So we have the free version, you have a basic version, and you have the pro version. And at the time of this- So that's digital zoom. What's nice is it adds a different focal length without actually having to record twice on two different focal lengths. So that's a little, a little hack to add some production value to your online courses. Okay, the last part of your post-production is your exporting and then uploading. And again, not knowing your editing system, you're going, to, you're going to have to look these up specific to your editing system or tell your editor what to do. He or she will probably already know how you need to have it exported. 
The important thing is where are you housing these course videos? A lot of course platforms have their own hosts like Kajabi. You can just upload the video right into there. Now, I don't like to do that because I find it slows things down. I like to bring all of my course material into Vimeo and do a couple of things. I want to make sure it ends and doesn't go to another video. I want to make sure I'm adding my speed controls and I want to make sure I'm taking off any of the additional fluff to make sure that people can consume it as easily as possible. Okay. Okay, so here are some super quick ways to add value to your course content and hint, 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 it is not your production value. It is not using a more expensive computer or a camera or hiring a really expensive editor. Although if you want to, I think that's a great idea. What it is, is adding things to your course that add inherent value, like taking your video and offering it as an MP3 so people can listen to it in their car or like a podcast worksheets, chapters, add chapters. It's another reason I like to use Vimeo because I can put chapter markers in there and tell people where to jump to. Cliff's notes inside of your learning portal, you can then put out the time code. Jump here if you're looking to learn this. Jump here if you're looking to learn this. Oh, it's so great. And I think I mentioned speed controls. Please, please don't make me watch anything on 1X. I think it's so unkind. Make sure they can watch you and you sound like a chipmunk or somebody on Helium. It's just being kind to your audience. Okay, final thoughts for creating videos for your online course. One, stop over thinking it. I just showed you exactly what you need to do to start making your course material today. So start it today. And the other is imperfect action. If you keep waiting for everything to be right, you are never going to put your course out into the world. And like I said in the beginning, your competition already recorded theirs yesterday, they're in editing and they're putting that out tomorrow and it is going to sell like hotcakes. How'd that feel? Not so good. Okay, go make your course videos today and I'll see you right back here next week. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. It just makes me happy. And Amanda, you know what to do. Hit that music bell.